All right, I'm going to start a project with a new 1966 cassette recorder from Mercury, which was a part of Philips, and as such, shares a lot of the Philips early cassette styling and mechanical things. Actually, it's made by Philips. Let's face it. Um, anybody with the er, familiar with the early Philips and Norelco recorders will recognize that immediately. And the sides. Now this is kind of different. This has, seems to have a permanently attached microphone. I have looked at this and there might be a way to disconnect that snap to get this off. But for the life of me right up front as I first look at this I don't see what that is. So I'm just not sure. Um, the battery compartment has a different release mechanism. Two thumb screws there. Mercury was the first record company to release pre-recorded music cassettes for these little cassette recorders. And in July of 1966, it released the first 49 for playing. So it kind of be interesting to get a collection of all 49 of those. I have a list, but I wouldn't know if the actual physical cassette is one of the originals or not. Now I have seen one of these from the outside, not the inside, where this is slightly different. This is kind of fancy right here, but I have seen the old kind with just the red and white push button. Um, I don't know how it could be much older than this. This is made in 66 and they announced the, they announced them in 66 so I'm not quite sure. But um, where this is the TR-8000 I have also seen what looks almost identical to this or identical to this as the record matic So I'm not sure of the uh, timeline there. All right, let's look at the uh, inside here of the chassis before we take it out. You can see the uh, main belts, kind of gooey, but not too bad yet. And the fast forward and reverse belt is dissolved off, so I'm going to have to clean all that out uh, before I replace the belts. Here you'll see this is uh, from the 47th week of 1966, and this is a it's a TR-8000. So, comparing this with a couple of other of my Philips Norelco products, here's a Philips 3302 from 1968. And you'll see a lot of similarities there. I had to replace the belts on this and clean this one out a lot. When I first got it, they were dissolved. Uh, I didn't have the right reverse and fast forward belt, so I used the number 32 plumber's o-ring. It seems to work okay. And this little dog here doesn't have a cassette cover. This is a Norelco 3301, although it's one of the 3301s without a motor control board. And this is from 1965. So you can definitely see the the heritage of this Mercury as being a Philips and Norelco product. Well, we're going to get started taking the chassis out of the case. Um, I feel kind of foolish. I did figure out how to take the strap off. There's just a couple of little clips that are stuck in these holes here. It's just a matter of getting them in the right position and unclipping them. I'm kind of disappointed when I took the DIN plugs out. The microphone is missing one of its posts, so I suspect this will not work. I do have another microphone from the Philips, so I can use that. We're ready to start taking this out. Looks like there's just four screws here. Here, 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 and here. Well, there's also one in the uh, 
cassette compartment and I'll have to take this off the uh, play button just going to unhook that make it a little easier turn it over and it falls right out put these in a little tray over here so I don't lose them. Usually when I pull these out these two volume control knobs fall off. That's not a big deal. It's just kind of a nuisance. One thing I hope is that the speaker is not wired to the chassis here. I've seen somewhere that's wired and then you sort of have to just be a little extra careful while you do things. I just hope it's kind of a press contact one like some of the others I've seen are but we won't know till we undo this. I'll probably edit out all this fumbling around with the screws. There's no reason to show that. You know what I'm doing. This is a much longer one there. On the other side here. Oh, let's take the... Oops, there it came out. So I'm just going to turn it over. All right, five screws. Now let's see if we can get the volume knob off here, or the, the play record knob off. And it pulled right off. Also, the record button will probably fall off. It usually seems to. You notice this is not the 3302 version because there's no port here for ex the uh, other accessory port. There's only two here. All right, next step will be to remove these three screws here. All right, let me put all these little washers and things aside. And let's see if we can lift this off. There we go. So next we'll come over to the motor screw and take this off. So I don't know where the other one of those is. There should be a second little shock absorber over here. But it is gone. But now we can see our main belt here. And fortunately, we've gotten to it before it's totally dissolved. And we can try and separate it as completely as possible. from the flywheel and there we go. One bad belt. And the fast forward and reverse belt is just gone. So now we have to start cleaning all of that but with with the main belt being okay this is not going to be that much of a cleanup job. Rusty supplies for cleanup for me are alcohol and lots and lots of Q-tips. All right, took a little longer than I thought. I did find a big, huge pile of stuck gunk under this wheel there. It took me a long time to clean out, and I keep going until my Q-tips come out clean. But I think we're about ready to 
call it quits and put the belts on it. I'm going to let this alcohol dry off for quite a while and then we'll uh, get to the new belts. I want to talk about belts for a minute. I have purchased off eBay the uh, little batch of what you'll see described as 10 belts to fix any cassette player. And I've purchased those a couple times and uh, once I did not get a belt small enough for this part right here and I've ended up having to use a uh, number 32 o-ring from the hardware store which did work I think you saw on both those other um, the Phillips and the earlier Neurocker I showed earlier this was on there and it works fine I don't know how long it'll work or if it does anything bad but in a pinch it works and this time when I ordered this I did get one that appears to be the right size but I had also ordered off eBay from England sends a little uh, diagram and uh, construction with it which is uh, nice so we'll start with the uh, fast forward one here in the reverse it's the smallest one and it goes in first my hands will probably be covering this up as I do it, but I'm going to use a little tool it makes it easier. Um, I'll still be fumbling around here a little bit, but a little hook tool, and um, there we go. One down. for the uh, main one. Those are always easy. I think we're ready to start reassembling a little bit. Put the cover on the motor here. Oh, the record button did fall off as I thought it would and one of the volume buttons fell off get ready to put it back in the compartment one thing you need to do is make sure that the make sure the record button is on first before you put it in there because you cannot put the record button on after you've put the chassis in. I found that out the hard way once. The first time I did this. All right, we dropped it in, and of course the uh, badge fell off. I forgot about that. I think that's fallen off of every single one I've ever changed but it's easily glued back on. Now we can start screwing these back together, uh, which I won't show all of again. It will go like that. Glue that down sometime. Record play button back on. And this is the odd part here, or one of the odd parts. That screw, which should hold the back on, just kind of sits there. It doesn't really do much, as near as I can tell. It doesn't hold the back on real well. It kind of pulls right out. Now for the test. 
got a uh, Norelco charger here. So far, so good. Let's see if it plays a tape. Fast forward and reverse both seem to work. Um, let's see if it records. Use the microphone off my Philips here. Let's see if I get anything recording. Turn that to off. Apparently that part doesn't work. <laughs> Oh, I don't have a remote in, that's why that didn't work. The power cord's in the remote section. So I'm speaking into the mic. I'm getting a little meter deflection there. Uh, not sure, oh, I gotta adjust the record level here, don't I? All right, so I'm uh, speaking to the microphone. I've got the record level adjusted now. And uh, meter's deflecting. So we'll see what's going on. Uh, the on-off control of this microphone didn't work because I forgot I didn't have the remote plugged in because I'm using the power cord in the other slot instead of the remote. So let's see what happens. I am a Mercury TR8000 from 1966. Speaking into the mic, I'm getting a little meter deflection there. Uh, not sure. Oh, I gotta adjust the record level here, don't I? All right. So I'm uh, speaking to the microphone. I've got the record level adjusted now, and uh, meter's deflecting. So we'll see what's going on. Uh, the on-off control of this microphone didn't work because I forgot I didn't have the remote plugged in because I'm using the power cord in the other slot instead of the remote. So let's see what happens. I am a Mercury TR8000 from 1966. Well, there you go. Looks like I've uh, successfully completed a repair here. I'm, I Still going to have to check out that microphone for this one. And I'll try running this on batteries, but that's not all that important. And just for fun, let's end with this. Maybe I'll do a video on this one day. So, I now have a working Mercury cassette recorder from 1966 to go along with my Mercury TR3500 reel-to-reel recorder from 1965. All right, now I'm just being silly. I hope maybe it was uh, informative. So, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Bye.